there's no there's no uh, end to what psyche can do because it's it's you it's your mind it's your power and we all know hopefully that we're really powerful beings we we just limit ourselves Help keep her life, learn, laugh, and thrive. We'll entertain your brain, keep you healthy and alive. If you like paranormal, have a spiritual mind, or if you just want to listen and have a good time, then stay tuned now for a new episode as we turn off the beat and we start the show. Wiki, wiki, wah. Ooh, wiki, wiki. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful Thursday morning here in Maine, and I am Matt Michael with the Health Humor Life Podcast. And for those of you who have been following this podcast for a while, yes, it has been a while since I posted. Life has been crazy, and I know it's been crazy for a lot of people. There's a lot of energies that just came in with the new, with the lunar eclipse we just had. Um, I know a lot of you out there are going to be going through some major transforming times, perhaps bringing on some difficult times. But I wanted the first thing I want to say is just know that this is for the better, um, regardless of what it is. Every difficult time, whether it's uh, losing a loved one or going through an illness or some type of hardship, this is all for our learning. And I know that it's we may not understand it all the time, and it's and it's it's hard to get through. But this is all to teach us a certain lesson. So I wanted to open up with that. I was feeling driven to to say that today, guys. We're talking about Psych K, and this is a very new, uh, in the grand scheme of things, method of changing your subconscious beliefs. So for those of you who follow the secret, and the secret book and the law of attraction, this I really strongly feel is the missing piece to the law of attraction, which isn't mentioned. You know, we think positive thoughts. The law of attraction basically says we think positive thoughts, we attract positive things, which definitely works in many cases. It worked for me throughout my life and even right now. But but even even for me in the last few years, I felt very blocked from, from some of this stuff, even though life was overall good, you know. And what started happening when I went through these Psych K sessions with the two gentlemen that I'm interviewing today, everything started to change like you would not believe, just experiencing all kinds of uh, new things, you know, financial, uh, more financial abundance, just complete life transformations. And don't get me wrong, you have to put a lot of work into this. Psych K attracts what you need in order to do the work and move forward. And a lot of this is really internal work. If you want to get anywhere in life, it's really all about going inside and, and really going inside yourself and figuring out what needs to be healed in order to get through your blocks. Because what happens then is you start attracting once your negative uh, negative blocks are out of you, or and it does it is a process, and it is a lot of reflection, a lot of bringing up old memories that some people don't want to think about. But in order to release those negative blocks and negative memories, we need to to think about them. Meditation helps with this too. So if you had any past traumas, those are the most common forms of blocks. And I can tell you right now, with Psych K, which I did many sessions with these guys, I'm not sure how many we did, probably 10, 12, 15, somewhere around there. And I can tell you my personal story. You'll hear some of it today. But Psych K is very similar to hypnosis and EFT tapping, except the difference is it works like that works like that instantly instantly your subconscious belief has changed and sometimes in some cases you can feel it go away especially if you're clearing a trauma when i was doing psyche with these guys i literally felt a trauma come right outside my right shoulder and just like go away and you'd think about the trauma and you'd be stressed at first and then as they're doing the method that they use the psyche method you'd feel it just go whoosh, and then you're thinking about it and there's no stress in your mind at all it's amazing literally amazing you guys will hear some of these stories today uh, for those of you who are watching on video you can now see us a uh, healthy life this month of august in September, we're moving all everything, all the podcasts, or most of the podcasts anyway, are going to be in video form as well on YouTube and a new platform called Reel.Video. Now, what's been going on with YouTube is YouTube has been censoring a lot of videos that are outspoken, especially like this podcast, like these videos that I'm going to be doing. And what's happening is people are moving to this new platform run by Natural News, Reel.Video, which is completely uncensored. So it's the governments and whoever else, you know, powers that be, you're censoring stuff on YouTube they don't want people to hear because, you know, we're, we're already programmed subconsciously in negative ways, which goes along with what we're doing today. So we're programmed through TV, through media, through music, and our subconscious mind is programmed to, to, to have fear. We live in fear, and that holds us back from achieving what we're truly capable of in life. Psych K helps to undo the process of living in fear. And I know I'm going on a tangent here, losing my train of thought. But Reel.Video, we're going to be on there. I recommend you guys check that platform out. It could be the YouTube takeover at some point. Paradigm is changing, guys, and there's going to be a lot of unexpected things coming to fruition uh, for the betterment of everybody on this planet. And I truly believe that, and I truly know that it's going to happen. It'll be a little chaotic at first, I'm not going to lie. So, also, guys, um, coming up this month and in September, I will be posting a lot more of 
you know, short videos, short podcasts. I'm developing a system for myself so that, you know, we'll still have longer, very informative interview type podcasts like this. But there's a lot that I would really like to get out there and share more often. And it's going to be in a less formal format, you know, very minimal editing, very raw, unedited. So I can just, you know, pick up my phone, film a video, uh, say what I need to say. You know, if I just learned something new and I want to share with you guys, I just pick it up, say what I need to say. You know, no intro or anything like that, or very short one at that. And then I can just share it with the world. And that's what I'm being called to do right now. And that's something I want to do to help the world, to get more information out there for those that want to hear it. I mean, if this is not resonating with you or you think it's all a bunch of garbage, then you probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast. There's going to be a lot of crazy stuff coming up. So that's what I'm planning on doing. You guys will see a lot more podcasts, a lot more videos from me in the future. You can follow me on Healthy Human Life on YouTube, Healthy Human Life on Real.video. Those will be uploaded on Real.video soon. Also on Instagram, I post a lot of personal stuff on there. It's now Fit Music Spirit is my name on there. And of course on Facebook. So thank you to all my listeners. Even though I haven't posted in a while, this podcast is growing exponentially despite. So I'm like, I'm like blown away by looking at the numbers coming back on here. And I haven't posted uh, one in over a month. And I mean, I'm, you know, it, the subscribers have gone up, the, excuse me, the downloads have gone up a ton and I'm just blown away by it. And I thank you guys for all your support. This podcast, these videos are for you. It's for you listening to this. If you're listening to this now, you're meant to hear this and I'm doing my best possible to teach you about these new, uh, you know, whether it be health ways, paranormal, spiritual, whatever it is you're meant to hear with this, you know, I'm doing my best to provide you with that. And am I always right? Absolutely freaking not. And that's why I expect everybody out there to do their own research, you know. I want, and that, that's regardless, no matter who we have, we, a lot of us have a habit over the years of hearing something and taking it as full truth and then just not ever researching it. You know, we live in an information age. You can go to Google, type it in and find some stuff. You know, you can compare people's different opinions, ideas, experiences. You can look at studies if you want. It's all matters. You know, studies aren't the end all be all. People experience aren't the end all be all. But when you combine that, you get a really good idea. Ultimately, though, we have to follow our inner intuition. Does it resonate with you? Does it feel right? And sometimes, We'll be able to feel that sometimes when you hear a truth, you'll be fearful of it. And sometimes that doesn't mean it's not true. That just means you're fearing the truth. So yeah, okay, going off on a tangent here. So, all right, guys. So we're going to get into the Site K podcast. That's all the announcements I have for today. Uh, please subscribe on, on YouTube. Uh, you know, subscribe to the podcast. It really helps us out a lot. We're on Spotify. We're on everything. We're on, we're on all platforms. And there will be more to come coming up very soon. We have another podcast coming up with uh, Zion Zeta, which is going to be mind-blowing stuff about her uh, ET experiences. Um, abduction experiences, that kind of stuff. Um, all kinds of stuff, guys. I mean, we're going to get some crazy stuff on here, and I don't really care what people think. If they want to, you know, shut it down or whatever it is they want to do, it's totally fine. You know, I'm going to put the information out there. If people want to, if it resonates with you, awesome. If it doesn't, you know, just who cares? Just take it as entertainment. So Psych-K, we're going to get into changing your subconscious beliefs with psych K, and you can do this virtually too. I did all my sessions virtually with these two guys using a surrogate, which they'll get into. And you can, you can do this, just, you know, you can book an appointment with these guys on the web if you're interested after listening to these podcasts. All the information will be during the podcast and at the end of it, I'll give it to you. And, you know, I'm really, I really love these two guys because they do such a phenomenal job and they're very genuine people. And they, I mean, I can't thank them enough for all the help they've given to me. Um, and you'll hear some stories in here, some success stories that they've experienced, that their clients have experienced. You'll hear some of the experiences of people I know that did it um, and the results they got. Some of the results are immediate. Some of them take time to build up because you got to do the work for them. But this is a very new, cool concept. It's very divinely spiritual, spiritually given, and it's going to be a wave of the future to change all this subconscious programming we've been given over the years by the powers that be that only hold us down. You know what I mean? We're now, this is helping us lift up. One example I want to give before we get into the actual interview is an example of what Psych K can do. So say if you're struggling with money out there, and a lot of people are, you have, if that is the case, you have a belief that money is negative, that you know you should be poor, or maybe you were poor at one point, you think money comes very difficult to you, all these different types of beliefs. It's almost like there's a ton of these different beliefs in there, and what the Psych K sessions do is they, each session you have, they peel them off like an onion. You know, like if you have a thought where you're thinking those things, that's a subconscious belief that you have within yourself. And I had a lot of those too, and I had to clear a lot of those. And ever since I've cleared a lot of those, uh, financial abundance have, have gotten a lot better. And I mean, trust me, I've done a lot of work for this. Uh, but if you stay on the path, you stay positive, you'll get there. Anybody can do this. So don't feel like you can't do this. You can't achieve what you want. The key to success in anything in life is going inside yourself, changing your subconscious belief and having faith in God and the divine that they're going to help you as long as you do the right thing. Always do the right thing. And these are all lessons I've learned. With that said, guys, I thank you for listening to the podcast. I will see you on the back end. The interview is coming up and it's going to be awesome. It'll be very informative. It'll be very... I, I can't recommend this stuff enough, uh, and, these, and especially can't recommend it enough with these two guys because they do a phenomenal job. And I wish them all the best in their business. And with that, here is the interview, and I will see you guys on the back end. All right, Brian Brandon, welcome to the Health Humor Life podcast. I'm glad you guys made it on. Uh, could you guys give me a uh, give me like a brief 
uh, synopsis, if that's the right word to use, on Site K and what it is, just so the audience knows. And then I want to kind of get into your background, you guys' both background, and how you got into it. Sure. So Site K is basically a set of spiritual processes that we use to basically show us our inner potential as spiritual beings having a human experience. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a bridge in these times for us to kind of step into our new consciousness that's coming into this world these very practical uh, and applicable processes. And that's what we call Psyche. And originally they were, uh, they came to a former psychoanalyst um, named Rob Williams. And he had basically a flash of intuition. Um, and it's a long, long story about how this happened. If you want to talk about it, we can definitely talk about it. But um, basically Rob Williams had also NLP training and What's NLP? NLP is a neuro-linguistic program. He was a master trainer. Okay. So he had that training and he also had training in psychoanalysis. And he was also a business professional. So he had all this knowledge. Um, but even with that knowledge, he wasn't able to actually help that many people. There were so many people coming to him with problems that he would work with for a couple of years. And his success rate with them wasn't very high. Um, so one day he, I guess I'll go ahead and get into the story. It's, it's kind of short. So he was printing out flyers for a, um, like a seminar that he was having about psychology. And every time he would print out the flyers, something would be wrong on them. You know, at first it was the date that he had forgotten to put or um, the place of the venue he forgot to put. So he'd print them all out and then he realized something else was wrong. And so after like three times of having to print out like 500 documents, you know, he, um, he was fed up. So he went outside, he pulled out his lawn chair and he sat down and he was kind of actually in an angry, like, you know, frustrated state. Um, not one that you'd, you know, usually expect int intuition to come to someone, but he asked, you know, God, what should I do? You don't want me to do this. It's obviously not working out right now. Uh, what do you want me to do? And in that moment, he had like a, almost like a teleprompter in front of his eyes. He could see like, hey, the, the original um, 13 core belief points that are essential to, for every human being to have, uh, were basically downloaded today. And he, he explains, he's like, I'm not a visual person. And people who know me know I'm not a visual person. So it's, it's that much more miraculous that this happens because I don't see things like that. I don't visualize things. But he saw it like it was in front of him. And he also explained that these things were not um, totally new to him. They were processes that he knew, but in a much more intuitive and just miraculous fashion. And that, that set of processes became the ground uh, the groundwork for a second. So, uh, so the way he saw it, as you described, was kind of like a vision, or was it just kind of knowledge download? So it was like he saw it. Okay. It was like mind's eye, he could see it in front gotcha. of him, like a teleprompter. So just to dumb things down a little bit, just because a lot of people that are listening aren't going to be familiar with a lot of the terminology. So. What was my train of thought? So if you were to explain Psyche in the most simplest terms, like the most down to earth simplest terms for someone that has no clue, like anything about it, like what would you say? So your beliefs are subconscious um, for the most part. So yeah, there are basically things that um, filter your world. So you see through like glasses that are tinted. You know, you don't see the world how it is. You see it how it benefits you, how it's useful to you. Uh, so for example, you, you don't see a fork as metal with five prongs, you see a fork that you can eat with, you know? So the, it's just, that's an example of the way that you filter your reality through your beliefs. Now, Sig K is uses something called muscle testing. Um, and it's, it's muscle testing is, is basically a whole thing of its own. It's, it's another, um, another thing to explain, but it's part of the Sig K process, right? It's part of the Sig K process. Let me, let me ask you this. So, so let me tell me if I get this right. So, so site K goes off the premise that your subconscious beliefs shape your life, right? And that site K works to change your subconscious beliefs. And how would you, would you say it's similar to the processes of hypnosis and EFT tapping? Yes. I would say that they are actually both very similar, um, especially the tapping there in, in a process of site K, we use the same uh, acupuncture meridians um, that tapping, you know, goes off of. Uh, and we do focusing of energy into those points. So it's very similar in that regard. And then with um, hypnosis, it's like hypnosis, except we change the, instead of trying to get a person into a, um, a certain brainwave state, we have what's called a meaningful ritual. You know, it's, and it's not anything where we're, you know, singing or anything, but, you know, it's not like a shamanistic ceremony, but, but it's, um, 
it's a meaningful ritual and it, it allows someone to introspect in a way that they're not normally used to. Um, and we, in this meaningful ritual, we get the person into a position, not, not a very hard position to get into, um, but it simulates a whole brain state and it actually creates a whole brain state. And we have, we have actually papers, uh, peer reviewed studies done on this that proves that there is a whole brain uh, activation going on during this, during this That's position to get into. Um, that position plus our, you know, conscious introspection affects the change on the subconscious level. And we're able to take a belief that we, that doesn't really serve us anymore, um, identify what belief we'd like to have instead that would benefit our lives, and then basically show our subconscious why it's more helpful to us to have and to hold that self life enhancing belief. And through that meaningful ritual, we basically go out with the old and in with the new and immediately change that belief at the subconscious level to one that we want. Awesome. So could you give people an example of that? Or I mean, I could as well. Like, um, so, so like an example of one, I mean, we'll go with, uh, you know, the woman that we were both witness to <laughs> working with where, she, where you guys did a belief of, um, I forget exactly what it is, where she wanted to be, she always felt not beautiful her entire life. And then you guys did a change where you changed that belief from, you know, I don't feel beautiful to, you know, I am beautiful. And the next day she goes to work and everybody's telling her that she's beautiful and all that stuff. And that's kind of the, that's one of the ones that I've seen. That's kind of like an instant thing. And yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like some of the, some of the beliefs seem to happen pretty uh, instant. And then some of them seem to take months to like years to kind of work their way up to is what, is what I've noticed uh, from yeah. researching and such and talking to you guys. Does, it, does that sound about right? Yeah. So the, the mind is a very, um, complex thing, especially in this day and age where we're, we're pretty much thinking all the time, which is actually not how it's, how the mind's supposed to be. But in this, you know, age where we have to be kind of stimulated all the time with our devices and everything like that, we have so many thoughts going through our heads, so many different beliefs that sometimes a, a person will come for a psyche session. Um, and it's important that we let them know that if we change one belief, you might not see it immediately. And it's not because the belief hasn't been changed but it's because there are so many other beliefs surrounding that one that are, that are keeping you from recognizing it. So maybe it's that you're naturally a skeptic, or maybe it's that you're, um, maybe you want to feel beautiful, but you also don't want to, um, maybe you change it to, it to, I feel beautiful, but you also have a belief that you have low self-esteem. So that's a different part. So the low self-esteem belief will affect how you perceive yourself as beautiful, even though we change the belief. So it, it there's so many different, um, there's so many different things going on in the mind at different times that even if we change one belief, uh, sometimes it may take a few sessions to see a noticeable change. However, that belief that we've changed continues to assert itself throughout your life. So when we change a belief like that and we make the, the point to the, sub, to the subconscious why that belief needs to be held for our benefit, um, that belief doesn't go anywhere until we need to change it. So that belief stays with us and in a good way, it affects the rest of our lives. So it's psyche, like, hey, you know, your first session may not have a huge change right away, but think of it like a butterfly effect. Think of it like a domino effect. As soon as you change one little thing to a positive light, especially if you're not in a very good place, um, and a lot of people in the spiritual path come from a place of pain, but that's what eventually becomes their, their biggest uh, strong suit. Sometimes people with the largest amount of pain become the most beautiful people because they have so much empathy. Before we get too down, far down the rabbit hole, can you guys give me a little, just like a short background on uh, each of your backgrounds as far as um, a little bit of what you've gone through and how you've kind of found Site K and what you've kind of done as far as working with people so far? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> um, well, I've been what I used to call myself a personal trainer for 25 years. But now with my involvement in subconscious reprogramming, I believe that everything starts on the energetic side of things. So if we could dissipate the energy in the brain, we could change motor patterns. And I also work a lot with opening people's airway and determining on whether or not they have a, uh, a high ability to breathe less or low ability to breathe more. And so I call myself a human performance specialist. Awesome. Uh, so I came, came to me through uh, a former friend who was practicing here in Manhattan and she did a session with me. And it was pretty amazing because I went over 11 I can messages that the creator Rob had put on one of his videos and through muscle testing, I tested weak to nine of the 11 I can messages 
And this was about two years ago. And I think I'm pretty successful and things are going the way I want in my life. But boy, once I changed the energy in my brain to actually being strong to all the I can messages, life really took off. And that's what made me a believer in said I K. One of those beliefs was I don't I didn't love myself. You know, but it, it makes sense once you go through the 25 years of psychology that it takes to, you know, determine why you don't love yourself. So you keep rehashing what was done to you over your, your childhood by your parents, by your teachers, by your schoolmates. But in one session of Psyche, you could take that belief or that disbelief that I don't love myself and you could turn it into I love myself right then and there. And I felt a massive difference. And that immediately turned me on to taking all the courses I could. Yeah. Because I, I'm a really and going off the I love myself thing, I can't remember the name of the book, but someone wrote a book that that's all they did was repeat that phrase to themselves for weeks upon, I don't know how long it was, months or whatever. I believe someone else told me about that. And I mean, their life just started changing. So it's kind of like, Psyche is almost like a quick way to do that. You know, you, you change the belief from I don't love myself to I love myself. Whereas if you weren't to do Psyche, you, you could do it in, in a way of um, positive affirmations. Does that sound about right? But it just takes way more effort and way longer. Um, that's, what, that's what makes sense. If you think about also, if, if someone comes into us and, and the first belief that we um, do Psyche for is I love myself. It depends if the person is in a very good place, they will probably start feeling the benefit of I love myself as a Psyche balance. Um, and, and we'll explain what a balance is in a bit. Um, but it's basically the change process. So when we do the Psyche balance for I love myself, if they're in a pretty good place already, it's likely that they'll feel the benefit pretty quickly. However, we've also had people come to us who are not in such a good place at the moment. And if we do a balance for I love myself, it's, it's usually a different manifestation because sometimes it can even make them a little bit more sad at first. Because see, when I was saying that there are beliefs surrounding that, one of the beliefs could be nothing works for me. Maybe they've tried for years and years and years to change things and they can't. So they are projecting that now in the psyche. So we may balance the belief I love myself, but their, their subconscious mind is still fighting that because they don't believe that they can change. So that's another belief, I can change. But then we do I can change. So it's, it's, a very long, it's a very long process, but it's a lot shorter than 25 years of programming. Yes, okay, makes sense. So as far as you, you guys do a session that's called the core belief session, which we did last week. So would that be something you'd recommend people typically starting with as like a baseline or does that, or does that not matter? So I, I wouldn't recommend the core belief at first, the core belief balance at first. And the reason why is it's a bit complex. Um, even for someone who's been doing Psych K for a little while, it's, it's a bit complex. So if, anybody, if anyone's familiar with, well, I'm sure everyone's familiar with like the school system. So you go from elementary school where you learn simple arithmetic to you know, middle school, high school, where you learn more complex things and then college where maybe you're learning integral calculus. You know, so Psych K is kind of similar where the core belief balance is more like the calculus, you know? It's a, it's a lot of different processes that the, you know, basic psyche um, has, and it puts it together into all these different, you know, in, into a system. And the system allows us to um, really bring about a huge change, but you also have to be ready to make that kind of change. And if you're going the first session and you are making all this change, it may really, really not be pleasant because you may have to, you may be faced with all of a sudden having to change everything about yourself. Yeah. Um, which isn't usually what people want. So what we do is we start with a basic change. We start with you know, something that they can see in their lives, something that will give them a, a very visible improvement. So sometimes it's a stress balance. Sometimes we help someone view a life event that was stressful as you know, they've, they've learned from it and they're, you know, they have a feeling of non-attachment toward it. That's sometimes a good place to start. Going off that, I mean, I can speak direct experience with that as part of my immediate results when we did uh, traumatic moments in my life when we did a session based on that. And literally I could, and I don't know if everybody feels the energy, but I could sure as heck feel the energy while this is happening. And you, you think about that, you usually have us think about that situation in our mind. Someone's, so your client would think about the situation in your mind. So in this case, it would be, be me. So I had this traumatic event in my mind and it was like, you know, you could feel the stress in your head at first. And then all of a sudden, like for me, I felt it just go whoosh, out my right shoulder. And then you're thinking about the event and it's not bothering you anymore, you know? And I know yeah. people have had way worse traumas than I've had in their life. So, and would you recommend Psych K as a way to kind of get past those past traumas? Absolutely. Um, though there's also people who have had traumas that cause PTSD and those traumas sometimes are very hard to face. So there, there's a through muscle testing 
and I'll explain muscle testing quickly now. Um, yeah, so he's putting his arm up. We usually do t muscle testing with the arm. So basically when we're muscle testing, what we're, what we're doing, what we're testing is the nervous system, not the muscle. We're testing whether there's a strong energetic output from the nervous system to the muscle to make it fire. You know? um, what differentiates a strong response from a weak response is the input to the person's subconscious. So the subconscious runs the nervous system, runs the heart, runs the lungs, you know, all of those things. It's the autonomic. So when the output from the nervous system comes here, it's either strong or weak. What is that determined by? Well, if I say something like, uh, I love you, it would usually be a strong response because I love you is positive. So the, the energy from the nervous system is a stronger energy, stronger output. So if I said, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, you know, if I pr press on this, it would be, we can actually do a demonstration, if you'd like, but it would be weaker because okay. yeah. it's, blocked. It's, it's not going out as, as much. There's a reduced energetic output. So here, let's do an example. Um, so, so, for the, so for the people that aren't going to see this visually, he's, uh, the Psyche testing is when you hold your arm out. So, and then when I've done in the past, it's a strong response indicates a strong answer depending on what's being said. So give me an example for that. Like say if I said, if we did the testing for me, I love myself or something. So originally I would have tested no to that. And I believe we did that and it changed it. So, so, if, so if my subconscious is saying that I don't actually love myself, even if my conscious thinks it does, you would push down on uh, the surrogate's arm and it would be weak. Yes. And if someone tested, like they actually did love themselves and you were testing for that, it'd be strong. Is that, is that a good clarification? Okay, so so go ahead. Why is if you say something that you don't mean, uh, tr try this, you can try this at home. Just say something that you don't mean, say a lie. You're gonna have, if you pay attention to your energy, it's different, it's lower, like it feels like you're kind of um, sapped of energy at that point. It may be a small difference, but you can feel it. And that feeling is all over your body. So your arm will be weaker. Um, if you say something like that, lie detectors can test that, but <laughs> muscle testing is a little bit even more accurate because you can, you can feel it um, up close, you know, and you can see it. Both people can feel it and see it. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah. And so getting back to the actual um, balance process, when you're testing uh, and you do the muscle test and it's weak, then you go and do the balance process where you go, uh, you do the meaningful ritual that I was speaking about earlier and you basically speak the belief into existence. Um, what that does is it allows you to, it's, it's brain dominance theory, but it's not so. So brain dominance theory is basically that there's you know, two hemispheres of the brain, one is dominant, one is not dominant. Um, people nowadays, scientists nowadays are, are actually not agreeing with that theory. They think it's a little bit more complex than that. Um, however, there is either asymmetry or symmetry in the brain. You know, there's either, um, the brain is a beautiful organ, so there's either like a, a synchronous function or an asynchronous function of the brain. And what we do in Psyche is we balance the hemisphere or the part of the brain that is asynchronous, that's not beautiful, basically, that, that's not responding to the belief that we want to speak into existence. You know, you say, I love myself, you don't feel it. All of a sudden, there's a conflict in the brain, in the heart. The brain is not the only so-called brain. You know, it's, it's actually maybe even not the, the highest brain. There's the heart brain, there's the gut brain, there's the skin brain, you know, every organ of the body is a brain. It's even the cells are brains. So it's not only that the brain, that we're balancing for the brain, we're balancing for the entire body, and the entire body is a manifestation of the mind. So when we get into that position and that meaningful ritual, we're doing it with the body, but we're not really doing it for the body. We're doing it for the mind behind the body. That's, that's okay. We know it is. We know it's different than what science has told us that the that the body creates what we call the mind. But they have no idea how that happens. You know, they and they can't prove it because that's not how it actually is. It's actually that the mind creates and manifested the body to encapsulate itself and manifest itself into form. And the the Rishis and the Yogis have known this for thousands and thousands of years um, without any, you know, scientific tools and. Uh, those kinds of experiments. It was more of a introspective experiment. Um, to get back to the balance, when we get into that position and we uh, affect a synchronous kind of dance in the, in the brain and the, and the body, we have that happen in the mind. And then that belief that was asynchronous becomes synchronous and 
our subconscious takes it and it becomes ours. So this belief now is slowly or quickly manifested into our world, but it never goes anywhere until we need a new one because the subconscious is timeless. The conscious mind is time bound. You know, the conscious mind says, I am going to do this. I will do that tomorrow. It thinks about the future. It thinks about what happened in the past. But the subconscious is always now. It's always taking in information and it's always telling you about the world inst like instantaneously. You look at something and you say, oh, that's a plant. Oh, that's a guitar. You know, you don't say that's a piece of wood with some strings on it. You know, that's the subconscious working immediately. Um, it doesn't think about the future. So when we change a belief in the present, that belief changes immediately. That's what's kind of hard to, uh, for some people to accept um, because it's such a quick process, such a quick change. However, that quick change doesn't mean that all of our beliefs in our, that we created in our 20, 30, 40, 50 years of life automatically change. So no process, and this is important to, to um, elaborate on, no process is going to instantly change you from depressed or hurt to happy, whole. You know, um, even psyche is a journey but it's a much quicker and a much more direct journey than a lot of other processes out there because it's so, it's so skilled in its approach. Um, it's a process directly to the body, through the body to the mind. It goes through the, the interface of the body, using the body as an interface. It talks to the mind. You know, we, we talk to the mind through psyche and change the beliefs right then and there. So what's, um, so if you guys could give me, either some concrete results, like these are kind of hard to come by. So whether you've seen your client's experience that we talked about a couple of them, but, or you guys have experienced in yourself, like what's something that you can pretty much, you know, came straight out of Psyche? Um, for me, it was becoming uh, an online business owner. I had taken the basic course and I had gone through some pretty important stresses in my life that, held me back from achieving what I consciously want, but was scared to go and face. And I balanced for these stresses. And literally like seven days later, I got an email from a former trainer that I that used to work for me telling me he was, it was a proposal of how he wanted to create my website for me and do all this stuff, be all this, do all this tech work for my website. And now I have this incredible website that I, for the amount of money that it costs, I would never have been able to do it at that moment in time. And it That's happened cool. after these balances. That's great. A lot of um, responses to stress that I've had in my life. And when you're afraid to do things, you're not going to get anywhere because you keep what you want away from you. You always say, I'm going to, which means you never get there. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, how about you, Brian? Definitely. Uh, I'd say the most concrete one that would be you know, I've, I've had ones that are more kinesthetic, more ones that have felt changes, but to get one that's pretty concrete and measurable, I would say food. So I balanced, I, I mean, obviously I'm not overweight, but I still abused food. When I, I was studying yoga and an important aspect of yoga, an important tenet is not to overeat, it's to eat just enough, enough to eat healthily. You know, eating is about healing and feeding the body rather than for pleasure. You know, obviously there can be some pleasure aspect, but you know, in a, in a perfect world, it would be a, it would be taste, it would taste good and it would be healthy for you. Um, but what I was doing is definitely eating too much and cheating a little bit too much with the food I was eating. Uh, sometimes it wasn't too healthy, uh, even though I, I've been vegan for almost two years now. So that could be a huge balance for a lot of people that struggle with uh, binge eating for sure. Absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. And that balance, I love food so much that balance took about a month to really take into effect. Um, but when it did, all of a sudden I was able to intermittent fast every day, um, eat two meals a day and feel good. So what I hypothesized could have been happening was the reason it took a month was maybe my body because the cells are extremely intelligent. Perhaps my body was figuring out a way to sustain itself on less food. Maybe it was adjusting in that time. And then when it was ready, all of a sudden I decided to take a uh, two or three day fast. Like out of nowhere, I was just like, I'm going to take a two or three day fast right now. And it, it was the perfect time because my body was completely fine the entire time I did the fast. So great. Yeah. You know, to listen to my body, but most importantly, you're not just going to see changes of psyche in your mind. You're going to see them in your body. Your body is going to do the change as well. So we can do this psychosomatic psyche. Don't just expect 
for mental things to change. You may feel literally if you do a balance that's I'm more I'm beautiful, things on your face could change. Like there's no there's no uh, end to what psyche can do because it's it's you. It's your mind. It's your power. And we all know, hopefully, that we're really powerful beings. We we just limit ourselves, but we are really powerful spiritual beings. Listen, there's a saying, you know, how beautiful the sunset is, how beautiful the ocean is, how much more beautiful the the witness of these things because the witness is the is the one that is really making these things come to life there's no thing or person or someone to witness the sunset then who is it beautiful to that's a very interesting way to look at it yeah that's really cool i never thought of it like that but yeah that's great um what was i gonna say so some of the results i've come across um just from reading about people and sometimes they're extremely hard to find. So a lot of psych k results are very um what words should i use like very like the word you just used a second ago and total yeah, I guess so. <laughs> like they're very kind of, they're internal, I guess, or they're just more like, like you would notice it more than anybody just in how you feel and how you act kind of thing. Um, I noticed, but I did come across, I was looking for some, some like abundance examples of people who have uh, gone through this. And I did find a, you know, a story of one couple who shared their experiences and it was actually updating as time went on. And I feel like that's probably why it doesn't get shared a lot because it's over a long period of time. But this couple was updating like their psyche experience and, and how it went over time. And they did one for abundance or some type of, um, you know, money type thing. And it didn't happen right away, but it was like through the course of starting in like 2013, 14, all the way up till now, like they were able to, you know, increase their business revenue every single year. Uh, more money kept coming in. And I can't remember what their business was, but it was in somewhere in the relation of, of helping people with something. I can't remember what it was, but I thought it was interesting. It wasn't like kind of like a instant thing. Like we always want instant you know, results, myself included a lot of the times. Um, so I have to like kind of take myself back a notch and be patient. Uh, but over the course of the years, there was measurable gains in income as they once they did the psyche and as they were continuing to do it, which I thought was really interesting to have to find a story that was like that. Cause that's, cause that's the one thing I've noticed is very difficult to come across these stories. And I feel like, especially for you guys and your business, this is what's going to help kind of uh, encourage people to work with you when they can see the results kind of thing uh, sure. or, or know what they're getting into. There, there was, um, we worked with someone only one time. And as soon as we worked with that, uh, like two weeks after we worked with that person, they would, do you remember what job it was that he, that he got? Yeah. He was a, um, he worked in the Sarasota Opera, and he had moved to Florida to actually work for a hedge fund, which he was doing very well in New York. He's got like three master's degrees, and he, he up and moved his family to Sarasota to work for a hedge fund, which was completely out of the norm. His wife didn't want to go, so they've been sort of suffering in their relationship for the last two years, and then he finally got a job back in music, so then he wound up balancing for his relationship and being nicer to her when she expresses her displeasure at her life. Because he found himself being like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, just get through it, you'll be fine. And that's not very nice to do with your wife. <laughs> so he, we balanced for that. And they started out, the next day they, they were getting along better, but then he said, well, she kind of went back to being the same way. But then two weeks after that, he was offered an even better job where he didn't have to where he could work half the hours, be home, hire a nanny, and that in that respect, he could then be there more for his wife the way she needed. Wow, that's awesome. That's a great story. And that's absolutely not what we were expecting, right? Right. Yeah. So the way that these things work is is far beyond our comprehension. So, so for example, my father actually balanced for a sleep issue. Um and about a month later or less, he was sleeping. But he hadn't connected Psyche to sleeping until I had a talk with him. I said, hey, you know, you're, you're sleeping now and you did a balance for Psyche. And he's like, actually, I think it was taping my mouth shut because he, he was a snorer. And he said, I think it was taping my mouth shut that allowed me to sleep better. And I said, well, if you think about it, how do you think you manifested that, that uh, technique of taping your mouth shut into your life? And how do you think that technique worked for you? Psyche. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly how I looked at it too with a lot of, a lot of what I've gone through. Um, so I've shared openly on the podcast, as I have with you guys, the issues with from steroid use and getting erectile dysfunction from it. And I, I can't remember how long ago we did the balance for that. Probably, I don't know, three or four months ago, but throughout that time. January or? Yeah, I don't, I don't even, I don't know. I always track a time so bad. I, don't, I have no idea. Um, but we did that balance at one point, you know, in the last few months. And, you know, it's taken me, you know, I had a breakup and I went to an intuitive healer to kind of do some healing from that. And then from there, like I found this person that, you know, had no one had ever heard about that. There's no way I would have ever come across her if I hadn't gone to see her that does uh, physical therapy for people who have had uh, 
any type of erectile issue or, you know, prostate surgery or whatever it's called. And uh, she works with them in, in uh, pretty much PT for the sexual organs. It's like, no, it's unheard of. No one's ever heard of that. Have you guys heard of that? <laughs> like, no, I haven't. And apparently, and also the guy that she learned from is the head of the uh, prostate recovery. Uh, I don't know exactly what his title is, but I'm going to interview him at some point. He's the head of what she does essentially. And he lives in Maine as well. So like all these people are in Maine and no one knows about this stuff. And it's just the beginning of just like, you know, teaching people about, about this. Cause I mean, I know there's thousands of thousands, probably millions of guys out there that have suffered with this kind of stuff. Most are afraid to talk about it. And that's kind of, you know, who I want to help from my journey. What's that? If you know, one out of two over 40 you suffer from it or something. It's oh yeah. That wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, and you know, a person I met last week, we connected on that. He like, I told him straight up cause I'm not afraid to talk about it. And he opened right up to me and he's like, I did the same exact thing, you know, and I uh, was able to heal. He, he was able to heal himself more from, you know, medicines in the Amazon is where he traveled to and was able to do that. So I thought that was interesting. Um, so, I mean, I will keep updated on the, on the podcast as to my journey with that. And the other thing I want to bring up on this particular podcast, which you guys already know about, but just for the audience, one of the balances I did was for money and something that was completely holding me back. And I knew it was, uh, was my parents' divorce because I always had it in my head back in the day where my mother had left my father for money and, and come to find out that wasn't the case at all. There was just a million other things going on. Yeah. Uh, so I had to kind of, so I always, as, as a result of that, I always had like a negative view of money and we had to balance that. So, so if I have a negative view of money, the concept with Psyche K is, or even hypnosis or any of those things is I'm going to like push money away out of my life. Right. Yeah. And so we had to balance for that uh, to, you know, help it be more receptive to it, which I've definitely noticed a difference since then as well. Yeah. And I think just as for anyone who's considering psyche, the best attitude to go into psyche with is it's different, totally different than the attitude I would suggest going into psychology or, or therapy with. Um, you want to go into psyche wanting to make the changes yourself because psyche is not a process that's going to change you. Hypnosis is kind of, you know, it's, it's where the practitioner is going to do something that's going to help you change, but they're really kind of changing you in a way. The thing that psyche is, is so, uh, it's so different from any of those approaches is that we're, we're giving you processes for you to help change yourself. So, you can't be a victim in this situation. You, you can't go to Psyche expecting to be healed from the Psyche process. You have to go in ready to use the Psyche process to heal yourself. If you do that, then the balances and, and the, the Psyche process will be about 10 times more helpful. So in other words, if you go to a Psyche session, you change a belief, you can't just go home and sit on the couch and expect it to just come. Is that kind of what you're saying? Okay, so you have to take action for it. Exactly. But also when you go into the, it's important how you view the session itself. So if you go in and you want, and your belief is, um, I attract, you know, I am abundant or I attract many clients or things like that, something like abundance. Um, you have to really be honest with yourself. That's, that's the key with psych K you have to go in and be really honest and want to change whatever it is that's holding you back from having money. You know, you have to be ready to change and, it'll still help no matter what attitude you have when you go into psyche and you do the balance, it'll still help you because it's proven through the kinesiology, the muscle testing that the changes happen. However, it makes it much, much, much more powerful. If you go into it with that, instead of a victim or a uh, kind of client type of outlook, you go into it like you are the spiritual being making these changes and you are actually manifesting psyche. I'm not mad manifesting psyche you're manifesting psyche into your life so that you can change these things so <clears throat> if psyche is coming into your life then you're ready for it it's there for a reason um but it's also don't give away your power to psyche psyche is a tool for you to express your innate power that's you know and it's a brilliant tool if you can step into your own power and energize it psyche is just it's just words on paper unless you're there to energize it so it's really important that you can find it in you to be extremely honest with yourself. And I'm going to give you an example of this. The reason I'm stressing this so much is I've done three core belief balances. Typically, uh, you only do, you only really need to do one. Um, but when I did the three core, the reason I did three is that when I went into the first one and actually two, um, I wasn't entirely honest with myself. Um, I kind of wanted to be strong 
I wanted to believe that I loved myself, that I, you know, all these things were already okay. And that is a common thing for some people. They want to, you know, they, they don't want to test weak to something like I love myself. They want to already think that everything's okay. They don't want to face the demons of life, you know, the demons. Yeah, I really get that, yeah. <laughs> um, they're just, you know, everyone has, everyone has challenges in their life. Um, but if you, when I finally, on my third one, decided to face them, I finally said, you know, um, I'm going to be completely honest with myself. I'm going to let everything that I feel come up in this balance and I'm going to balance it. I'm going to change it. And I'm ready to change that attitude. You'll never have to, you know, another core belief balance. If you can, if you can have that attitude toward every balance that you have, that you're going to be honest with yourself that you're, you are ready for the change. You know, um, if you're not if you meditate and, and see if cycling is right for you at this time, um, or, you know, just prepare yourself for it. Always, you know, when you're going into psychic, be prepared, read up on it, read experiences, uh, and then go in with no expectations. Um, that seems like the common, uh, that seems like a common theme for a lot of different uh, spiritual practices and ceremonies. You kind of go in and keep an open mind and don't expect anything out of it. You know, expect, but don't expect, you know what I mean? Um, at least yeah. it's this linear world we live in. Humans always need to put work. Oh, you're breaking up. Can you say that again, Brian? You broke up for a minute. It's our, it's our human need to make everything linear. And what we're talking about isn't linear. It's abstract. It's the energy that surrounds every organism on the planet. I'll share. That makes a lot of sense too. Uh, so as we're finishing up here, could you guys uh, kind of go down and go through like some of the reasons why someone would want to do a psych K session, like the several different reasons where it could be, I mean, I could name a couple like, you know, binge eating a past trauma that they, you know, let kind of haunt someone to this day that they want to get over. Uh, maybe smoking. I don't know if that's one that you guys do or not. To quit smoking. Uh, I'll let you guys have the floor from, from here. Any questions? Um, people who are possibly near death. Um, there's a, an amazing balance called the life bonding balance that basically removes fear of death um, by making you face it. See, this is like, it's not, it's not a, it's not like a, a miracle pill. You know, you, it, you are facing your death experience and a life bonding balance. But if you can face it there, in an imagined setting, it doesn't actually, it reduces the fear of actual death. And it's, it's, it's a really amazing balance. And I've, I've had people have amazing experiences in it. Um, but sometimes people have a hard time visualizing the death process. Um, but it's, it's, it's really good for people who are either near death, maybe older, maybe have a sickness uh, and they don't know because it allows you, if you don't fear death as much, it allows you to live your life with a lot less fear overall. Um, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. That is often called a fear that, that spawns all other fears. You know, there, if you had 300, 400 years to live, you probably wouldn't be fearing, you know, uh, everything because nothing could, you know, hurt you. If you knew that you were going to, you know, nothing could kill you for the next 400 years, you know, um, you wouldn't live life with as many fears. You'd go do things. Uh, it's the same way. When you don't fear death, you are able to take more risks. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, that's one. Another one is, let's say you have a relationship that is troubling you, uh, or maybe a family member that you'd really like to be closer to, um, and you're not, there's something called a relationship balance. And this balance allows us to foster much better relationships with people. Uh, it, it, what it basically does is allows both people to be in a whole brain state in each other's presence. So they're not being they're not being taken into what's what Eckhart Tolle calls the pain body. And I'm sure some of you know Eckhart Tolle. If you don't, he's a spiritual teacher from uh, Europe. But he, he talks about this pain body that everyone has to some extent, most everyone, uh, where they've had suffering and, and challenges in their life. And that it becomes this sort of pain body that when it's, it's activated, it turns on and all of a sudden you lash out. Um, so that's important in a relationship that we don't get into that pain body state. The relationship balance allows us to not activate each other's pain bodies so we can stay in a respectful, loving state more often in each other's presence. So that's, that's the benefit of the relationship balance. Let's say someone wanted to do a balance like to help with uh, weight loss or stopping binge eating. What's some of the beliefs that would come up that they may have that, they would, that you would change them to? Uh, so it could be lack of self-esteem. So I, you know, I'm not worthy of this. Uh, it could be a lack of... Uh, feel like a lack of it's still self-esteem but like a lack of power so maybe i'm not able to change um or maybe i'm too uh weak 
change. It's a lot of self-esteem, but it could also be other things. Maybe uh, I don't deserve to change, also self-esteem. Um, but I feel like a lot of things of binge eating and, and maybe weight gain is, is self-esteem issue. It's a self-esteem issue. So there are a bunch of things. We have pre-actually pre written statements for self-esteem, so, uh, 11 of them. But you can also come up with your own. So it could be anything that gives you personal power. So I am able to weight, uh, lose weight easily. I am able to diet easily. You know, I am able to, um, I am worthy of losing weight. I can easily, another one could be like, I can easily picture myself losing weight. I can easily lose weight. So let's say you're a visual person. Maybe you want to say, I easily picture myself losing weight. Because if you can picture yourself losing weight, and you can visualize it, then you can put that into action. You know, or maybe you can't even see yourself losing weight because until you do that balance, because there's such a block there. You know, maybe it's just like I'll never do it. So why am I even going to visualize it? Um, so it's awesome. okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, allergies, gluten allergies, any kind of allergies, rashes. We can actually ask the subconscious direct messages. Does mm -hmm. it have a message for us? And that message, like Brandon was trying to allude to, could be the rash could be. I, I am worthy of love because something happened at a stressful moment in your life. Like I had a woman who had a gluten allergy and she remembers a time you have to, you have to, you, it is kind of psychoanalyzing people when you talk to them, except we're not trying to get to the root of their problems with what we know. We're allowing them to talk it out. So when they talk it out, it turns out that this woman was sitting at the dinner the table when she was five years old and her father hit her mother. And she was happy to be eating a piece of bread. And then he grew up becoming gluten intolerant to wheat. Wow, know, that's really interesting. And then after she balanced for it, she literally just said, okay, I'm doing this. And at lunch, she went out and she had a wheat tortilla and she didn't respond. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. But that's, that's amazing. That's a, a result indicative to her experience yeah. only. Yeah, so at the same time, uh, Psyche doesn't, we can't, Guarantee that psychic can cure any sort of diseases uh, or, or issue or, you know, syndromes or anything like that. However, it's possible um, because remember, any problem of the body is originally a problem in the mind. And you may say, well, how do children have cancer then? Um, that's, a, that's a heavy topic. It could be, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people in the East believe in reincarnation. Could have to do something with that. Um, that's the first thing that popped in my head when you said that. But that's, uh, you know, it depends on who, who is watching. Maybe they have different beliefs. So I won't speculate on that. Um, one, uh, one touching on that, when I, one thing that made a lot of sense to me that I heard from a spiritual teacher, medium, who's been doing it forever. She's a, a reverend, et cetera. Um, she's done healing on, uh, on myself as well as two people I know with like crazy results. But well, the one thing that she said that made a lot of sense is you can't fully heal until you heal the mind, body, and the spirit. And she also said that, you know, the initial manifestation of a disease can come from any one of those things, um, whether it be, you know, physical, like nutrition, like something going into the body, or, you know, like you said, in the past life, trauma type thing that can manifest. So it could be like anything really from what I'm getting out of it. Yeah. Totally. Does that make sense? Um, so closing statements, anything you guys want to say at the end uh, about Psyche or, um, and then I want you guys to kind of promote what you're doing and where people can find you if they want to do a session or you can promote your, your course, Brian, as well. Cool. Thank you. Well, the thing about Psyche is, you know, there's a new science. It's not really new, but it's being heavily in the news now. It's called epigenetics. It means your thought determines how your gene expresses itself. So in your DNA, there's 3 billion strands of DNA, and each strand can express itself in over 3 billion ways, but not without an environmental trigger. So if I was a human being in uh, an empty room, I'd only be responding to the blackness. So my DNA would express itself based on no information except for this empty room. As soon as something comes into that room, I now have to respond to that, and my cells respond accordingly to whatever it was, a stress, a loving vibration, you know, and we just take it bigger from there. So now you're in this big, huge city and you're constantly bombarded by stresses and environmental triggers, well, they trigger your cells. And Psyche can help to reverse epigenetic triggers that might have caused you to wind up feeling that you're a piece of shit your whole life. And once you change that belief, it 
reverses the epigenetic trigger and so many things because we're so we're not bound by anything we're we're effervescent we're we're just manifestation waiting to happen and that's what it can that's what it can do there can be so much that manifests from it in a good way internally first to externalizing because everything happens internally first so i run a program on my website called quantumfitness.org and it's a mind body spirit program i don't just do physicality i believe that my breath our breath is most singularly most important which leads us to being able to meditate well i teach people how to breathe meditate food an intermittent fasting plan it's a five-week course and it's very affordable and then i teach people over 50 different movements of how to open up your fascial tissue which is your muscles but your whole body so you're opening up and the more you open up again the more epigenetic triggers that can be changed to a positive way which means your dna expresses itself positively because epigenetics says that there's no such thing as a gen now i know people will go muck about this there's no such thing as genetic cancer. There's no such thing as genetic anything. Yes, your family passes genes on to you. Yes, you take them on. But it depends over the course of your life, the experiences that you've had, whether or not they'll manifest. Because everybody in my immediate family has died of cancer. But my inflammation levels are next to zero. My PSA is next to zero. I'm almost 50 years old. And I also have the belief that I'll never get sick. You know? So my business has gone from teaching people how to work out to teaching people mind, body, spirit practices that can really benefit their life. And they can do it from the comfort of their own home. Because Psyche doesn't need to be in an office. We can do it virtually through the computer, through surrogation, which we could explain, but that takes a little while. So when's the last time you've gotten sick? Uh, I had about like, food poisoning maybe about two years ago. Definitely was a reaction to food, but a real sickness in terms of what we would call a virus or a bacteria, 20 years that's awesome for me i can't remember the last time but definitely before high school probably around 10, 2010 2011 so um, and you know what i hold that belief oh you've skipped out for a sec oh when neither of us get colds stuff yeah. like and i have i hold the same belief strongly too i can't remember exactly where it came from but i haven't gotten sick i got sick maybe once last winter and it's been it's pretty rare i haven't got sick at all this winter and usually usually i'll you know aside from the mental thinking that I'm not going to get sick, I'll literally use a lot of nutrition to prevent it. If I feel it start coming on, I'll like load myself up with what I need and it won't ever come on. So it's been helpful in that aspect. Um, getting back before we get too far with the, with the quantum fitness, uh, your program, what are some of the results that people can expect going through that? And how long does it last? It's a five week course. And if you follow it, see a lot, some, some people have taken the course and, and decided, well, I'm going to do a little bit of what he says, but then you don't get the benefits of what the four modalities have to offer. So I encourage people to be vegan, but you don't have to. But the reason I encourage it is because we're trying to put less stress on the body by eating meat and fish and meats and things like that and dairy because they carry an energetic expenditure. So anything that's, anything that's a carnivore um, eats plants, that we consume, that humans consume, eats plants. They're not carnivores themselves. Pigs, ducks, rabbits, cows, they're eating plants. So you have to break down the energy within the cell of the animal just to get the plant food, which you can get by eating plants. There's a big misnomer about animal protein. I mean, I'm vegan and I, you know, I haven't lost any strength eating no animal protein for the last six years. And I thought I would, I was, you know, I was that guy who thought I needed to eat that. I need oh, hundred grams of protein a day. And actually what I was doing is was putting a toxic overload on my system, especially in my gut. Yeah. I mean, think about the rhinoceros. <laughs> it's plenty beast you know, animal on the planet. very good points very good analogy yeah absolutely oh. and uh for those of you and, and so and brian i use you sometimes as an example when i'm talking to people especially about plant-based eating i haven't gone quite that far myself but i do do plant-based like a good portion of the week but you look like you're probably 30 years old and you're how old 50 I'm almost 50 yeah almost 50 yeah and i and i literally i show i show people your picture once once in a great while and i'm like how old do you think this guy is and they're like, uh, you know, like 20s, 30s. I actually just showed a girl last night. And I'm like, he's 50. <laughs> and I always forget that you're 20 years older too. But that's literally the power of plant-based eating. Uh, absolutely. And that's something that I, I, I want to get to that point myself where I'm fully plant-based, at least, you know, 95% of the time. And I've done it briefly before. And I've also seen, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there's this, I forget how old she was, like this 70-ish, 80-year-old woman that lives only off plant-based foods in her own garden. She literally looks like she's like in her 30s. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. I have the video somewhere still. It's, it's, wow. it's very, it was a news story, but yeah, it's insane. 
and her husband doesn't eat like that. And I mean, he looks exactly like you'd expect him to at that age. You know what I mean? It's oh, crazy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, in the Western world, things are just so available to us and it's all marketing. Yeah. Because we, we watch TV and start the internet, we see all these ads. So we put things inside ourselves that we don't necessarily need because <laughs> your body doesn't need very much food. And it actually doesn't need a lot of water either. People think it needs a lot of water and it doesn't need a lot of water. So it's always about balance. Um, if you want to look to the, the right, like if, if you are really wanting to follow a lifestyle that is incredibly healthy, look to the Ayurvedic tradition as well. Um, the Ayurvedic tradition has all the guidelines for, for how to bring balance into your life. Um, what is that? How do you spell that? Just so people... Oh, A Y U R V E D I C. Ayurveda okay. is an Eastern tradition um, of healing and meditation, but it's the, the key word for that is balance. Don't drink too much water. Don't drink too little water. Don't move about too much. Don't move about too little. You know, it's all about balance. Even working out, you don't want to work out seven days a week, two times a day. You want to work out, you know, four times a week or five times a week, maybe an hour of exercise a day, not six, you know, it, it's, uh, it's all about the balance of our lives and balance is the most important thing. His program is an amazing tool to bring balance into your life as a habit because it's the three different aspects, body, mind, spirit. You are, if you are balanced in those three aspects, if you're working on those three aspects all at once, the changes are, are incredible, much, much more so than if you were to just focus on exercise for three weeks or food for three weeks or uh, fasting for three days, you know, it's, that's just one aspect and that's not balance. So balance, if we can get into a balanced state for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks program time, um, it could change your life because a lot of us in the Western world are not balanced. Uh, we have obsessions, we have, you know, addictions, maybe we can't survive a day without our phone. You know, that's, it's all because we're not balanced in different ways. And the balance of the body, mind, spirit is incredibly important. And I want to offer your listeners a discount because this past Friday I did a wellness day at UPS, United Forces mm -hmm. Service. Yeah. So the program is, um, it's a set fee. So if you type in the code UPS25, you get $25 off. Five weeks. Okay. And how, how long will that code be available? A lot of people will listen to this way in the future. Okay. It'll be available for the codes up there as long as I, I can give it to anybody I want. Okay. <laughs> cool. UPS 25. Awesome. So UPS 25 and you can access it from, at quantumfitness.com? Dot org. Dot org. Okay. Quantumfitness.org. Awesome. And how about, how about the site K, the other website? Tell them about the, our, your website. Yeah. It's called uh, thrivevibe.com. So it's T-H-R-I-V-I-B-E.com. Um, it's a work in progress. So it's eventually going to be encompassing a little bit more than site K. It's also going to be uh, biohacking, which is plant-based eating, fasting, um, things like that. So it's basically another side of quantum fitness. So quantum fitness is, is um, meal plan, you know, uh, movements, functional movements, whereas um, dry vibe is, is more of psyche, uh, mental hacks. So it's how do you bring your mind onto it? So a lot of business people um, or people working in maybe software engineering have to have their minds at top, top speed. Psyche can help that as well. Um, Psychic can help you change uh, and, and modify and upgrade your mind. Um, so that's that's another important thing that Psychic can do. But Thrive Vibe is still is still in the works. But we have a page there that describes Psychic in very great detail. Uh, if you want to check that out, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So so if people want to learn more about Psychic and get in touch with you guys, they go to thrive thrivevibe.com. Yeah, t h r i v i b e dot com. Okay, awesome. All right. Any, anything else you guys want to add before we close out? Uh, no, it's just been a pleasure working with you, Matt. Thank you for inviting us on the podcast and thank you for allowing us to facilitate your psyche sessions. Absolutely. I've really enjoyed it. And I mean, with working with you guys, I literally went off. It hit, I remember it, it hit me one day. I wasn't really sure what psyche was, but I did my own research. And when, when it, when it hit me that first of all, the, our subconscious beliefs, you know, shape what's going to happen in our life, like whatever we subconscious believe, and that site K can change it automatically. And once I made that connection after researching, that's what really was like, you know, even though you don't see immediate results, like I know that it's going to work. And I feel like uh, that's kind of the inner feeling you have to like come to in order to be really confident in this process a lot of times. But that's, I mean, that's where I'm at. So I'm kind of a student of the game, as you guys probably know, as far as anything spiritual at this point, I'm just like ready to change as much as possible for the better and just keep moving forward. So exactly where you need to be and you're beautiful. <laughs> I appreciate it. To, to be, you know, it, it's, when you do, when you do spirituality, when you learn spirituality, uh, evolve in spirituality, 
it's always good to become a master at a part of spirituality. Maybe a master of meditation, maybe a master of plant-based eating, a master of fasting. You want to be a master at something, but you always want to have the mind of a student as well. Never ever want to close yourself off all the way. So even the greatest, you know, uh, Zen masters uh, will be open to learning. You'll, you'll see that they love the West. They love, you know, the, the Dalai Lama, for example, is a huge fan of the West um, because they're just open to new things. So this is, it's, it's a really important aspect of, of all of our, our entire life, as well as Psyche, to remain open, even if you know NLP, even if you have past hypnosis work done or QHHT, um, go into Psyche like you're, like you've never done anything like that before and see what happens. Yeah, I think that's a great point and I agree with you. That's always where I'm trying to keep my mind, learn from like everything and everybody and don't look at anybody as, you know, above or below you is how I try to always remain. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, that's how I feel. I mean, thank you guys for being on the podcast. It was an awesome conversation. I think a lot of people get a lot out of it. Yeah. And yeah, that's all I got. If you guys got anything else. No. no. All right. Awesome. I'll close out right now. Okay. Thank you guys. Hello again, Matt Michael here. I hope you enjoyed that interview with the Site K guys, Brandon and Brian. They are phenomenal, genuine people. They are very willing to help in with their new business. And I recommend you guys, if you want to change your life for the better, you really start working with these guys because they will help you do just that. It is worth the investment up front. They do phenomenal work and they're going to be very successful in what they do. They already are. And I will be their number one uh, testimony to what they've done for me. It's phenomenal. And so I talked about towards the end of the podcast, plant-based eating and when this was recorded, this interview, I actually wasn't completely doing plant-based eating. I was drawn to it, as I stated, and this was just something I wanted to mention. But now I am fully a, a vegetarian, plant-based eater, something I never thought I would ever accomplish. But through a spiritual awakening journey, through raising my vibration, I've been able to accomplish that very easily. It's almost like you just don't want meat and you know garbage food anymore. And I've been away from garbage food most of the time for a long time. But anyway, I just want to mention that. So with Psyche Results, guys, uh, hold on, I'm losing my train of thought here. You guys, if you guys are interested in doing a site case session or just talking to them about doing one, you can go to either thrivevibe.com, which is Brandon's website, T H R I V E F, oh, excuse me, not F, V I B E.com, Thrive Vibe. And you can email Brandon there and get more information. Brian's website is quantumfitness.org, in which he also has an online program there, in which you can get a discount on by using the code UPS25. And let him know I sent you. Uh, so, so, guys, to end this, subconscious beliefs shape our lives. Anything that we believe subconsciously, is what we manifest physically. And some of the beliefs you may not realize that you have, and these guys will help you dig them up. So I recommend working with these guys, talking with these guys, doing at least one session. It's phenomenal, it's worth it. You will not regret it. Some changes, like I said, you'll see instantly. Other changes take a lot longer. It depends on how big the change is. But you heard the story in this, where I had an ex-girlfriend who did one session with them, and she'd always struggle with her self-esteem and not feeling beautiful, and they did a, 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 a Psyche transformation a session with her, and made her change her belief from I'm not beautiful beautiful to I am beautiful. And the next day she went to work, she was getting tons of compliments and all that, which is, you know, it's unreal. Absolutely unreal. This stuff is awesome, guys. It's very similar to hypnosis and EFT tapping, except it's like that. You know, you change the belief like that. Hypnosis may take a few sessions for one belief. Same thing with tapping. This is very easy. Sometimes you'll even feel the energy changing uh, if you're very sensitive to that stuff. It's phenomenal stuff. Wave of the future. I highly recommend checking these guys out. So with that said, guys, we get guides up on healthhumorlife.com, the holistic health guide. And also, if you just want to get in our email list to get all the updates, that would be awesome. We have coming up the New Age Holistic Health Weight Loss System Academy. I don't know what to call it yet, but it's holistic weight loss for spiritual people. It's going to be a membership site, which is very inexpensive and coaching. If you guys want the in on that, when it comes out later this year, uh, just get on my email list on healthhumorlife.com or newageholistichealth.com. And that is going to be phenomenal. It's literally holistic weight loss. So affecting uh, the mind, body, spirit, and it's catered to spiritually oriented people, people oriented to spiritual growth. So if you're someone who needs to lose weight or wants to lose weight and you're a spiritual person, this is literally the uh, fit ma uh, the best fit made in heaven, if you want to call it like that. That's what I want to do this for. So it'll encompass all kinds, way beyond weight loss and way beyond health. It's catered to put you on a healthy path, path for the rest of your life in a very genuine way. You know, I got tired of seeing all these people with all these, these trainers with all these ridiculously $5,000, $1,000, whatever programs. So I wanted to put something out there in the double digits, you know, not even, you know, half of a hundred, let's put it that way per month. So very inexpensive, you know, you sacrifice a couple of meals out to eat and there you go. There's, and you can, you can even replace it with your gym membership because this is, we'll have workouts all from at home. So this is something I want to do that I'm putting up and for the sake of everybody else. And because the one thing that holds people back from their health and transforming their health is not having the right knowledge, not having the right motivation and, and the best way to get that knowledge and motivation is to hire a coach. Hiring a coach can be super expensive. This is going to solve all those problems. It will not be expensive uh, and it will help you stay motivated and it will help you 
know the right knowledge to succeed, making it very easy. There's no one time off fitness plans here. It's very self-customized and customized. You guys will see what I mean. So if you're interested in that at all, I will be sending discounts out to everybody on my email list when it launches. So get on my email list, healthhumorlife.com. Just sign up for the book area where you type in your email. And I know I haven't emailed my list in like forever. <laughs> so like I said, guys, I'm going through a period of spiritual growth in this business. And this is the most important thing for me right now uh, in order to better serve you in the very near future. And that is coming real soon, guys. Trust me on that one. Before the end of the year, things will kick off, not only for me, but for a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of changes coming, so be prepared for that. Stay positive during the negative times, and we will all move forward together as a loving community and support of one another. Thank you for listening, guys. I will see you on the next Health Human Life podcast. Like I said, there will be some short podcasts coming up in between. Very, you know, no intros, just very raw, unedited me talking directly to you guys. And that's a way for me to get more out to you guys in a much faster, more convenient way. Okay? Thank you for listening, guys. Thank you for the support. Go to healthhumanlife.com. Get the free guides. Check out some of our past podcasts. Um, and anytime you can leave us a review, too, that would be that would help me tremendously to spread the word of this and spread the word of all the good work we're trying to do here at Healthy Human Life. Thank you so much for the support. Love you all, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Health Humor Life podcast. I really appreciate your support, guys. I just want to take a moment to remind you that you can join our email list, view show notes, and the blog, as well as get some free guides on healthhumorlife.com. The guides include various topics, including how I lost my 50 pounds in three months, how I was able to naturally cure my chronic anxiety, depression, insomnia, lower blood pressure, eradicate erectile dysfunction, and much, much more. I put these together from what I've been through to help all of you who may be struggling with these issues too. You can also request topics or apply to be a guest on the website too. And you can do all this by just visiting healthhumorlife.com. As always, if you have a minute to leave us a positive review on the podcast listening station of your choice, I would really appreciate it and it helps us out a ton. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. I'm Matt Michael.